Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the dining philosopher problem. Initially, we have a table and a set of five plates and a fork lying next to each plate on the table. Next, we have five philosophers whose only work is to keep thinking or feel hungry and eat. There are a few problems associated with this situation. They are starvation and the deadlock. So what is the starvation and deadlock? Starvation is a situation where one philosopher never gets the chance to eat. Thus he eventually starves and dies. Deadlock is a state where one philosopher is waiting for the other philosophers to complete eating. And the other philosophers in turn are waiting for the first one to complete eating, thus forming an unending cycle. One of the solutions for this problem is called the conductor's solution. This solution introduces a waiter or a conductor to arbitrate. Philosophers must ask his permission before taking up any forks. Because the waiter is aware of how many forks are in use, he is able to intervene and prevent the deadlock. We implement the conductor as a semaphore. To further simplify the logic, we implement a rule to request forks, say right fork before left fork or vice versa. Consider that the philosophers are labeled clockwise from A to E. If A and C are eating, four forks are in use. B sits between A and C, so has neither fork available, whereas D and E have one unused fork between them. Suppose D wants to eat. When he wants to take up the fifth fork, deadlock becomes likely. If instead he asks the waiter and is told to wait, we can be sure that the next time two forks are released, there will certainly be at least one philosopher who could successfully request a pair of forks. Therefore, deadlock cannot happen. I know you guys must have found the previous lecture on learning philosophers quite boring. And I wouldn't blame you. These things are quite hard to understand. But I have a solution. Who better to explain dining philosopher problem than the dining philosophers themselves? Let's go meet them. These are the dining philosophers. As we can see, there are five of them, and they have five plates with exactly two forks around each plate. Now, the dining philosophers have only two cares in the world. They think, as they're doing now. And they get hungry, they eat. The philosophers don't care about the other philosophers. When they're hungry, they pick up their forks and they eat. There's just one rule. They need both forks at any point of time if they're supposed to eat. With one fork, they cannot eat. Now this could lead to a variety of problems, as we shall soon see. One of these problems is the case of deadlock. Suppose all the five philosophers were to get hungry at exactly the same time and pick up the right forks. There seems to be a problem, isn't there? None of them have their left forks. None of them can eat. And do you see a solution to this problem? No, there isn't. None of them are going to drop the right forks. Hence, none of them are going to be able to pick up their left forks. Eventually, the philosophers are going to starve. They're getting hungry, they're getting tired. Eventually, they're going to die. We have five dead dying philosophers because all of them pick up the right folk at the same time. Deadlock has killed our philosopher. One more problem we could face with such a scenario is that of starvation. Let's see what's going on. Philosophers 1 and 3 find themselves hungry. They start eating. And when they drop their forks, the remaining philosophers, 3 and 5 start eating. Philosopher 2 is still thinking at this point. Philosophers 3 and 5 are now satisfied. They drop their forks. Philosopher 2 is getting hungry, but his right fork seems to have been taken by philosopher 1.
1 and 4 are now done, we just have to get back to thinking. Philosopher 2 seems to be getting a little worried now. He's getting hungry, but he's never getting an opportunity to eat with both forks. Remaining philosophers 1, 3, 4, and 5 seem to be quite satisfied. Okay, philosopher 2 seems to be in a bit of trouble now. As we can see, philosopher 2 is now starving because the remaining philosophers aren't giving him an opportunity to eat. Philosopher 2 eventually dies. This is the problem of starvation. Another situation in which we could have starvation of dining philosophers is if one of the philosophers gets really greedy. He decides that he's hungry and he starts eating. After eating for a while, he decides he's had enough. He drops his forks. But he doesn't want to think. He wants to get back to eating. As we can see, philosopher 5 here never got an opportunity to access his left fork. And philosopher 2 there never got an opportunity to access his right fork. The remaining philosophers 3 and 4 are fine. Philosopher 1 now drops his fork. But he's greedy, so he gets hungry again. You want to eat some more. Philosophers 2 and 5 seem to be starving. Let's see what the end result of this could be. As we can see, philosopher 1 seems to have gotten really, really healthy after eating so much. Philosophers 2 and 5 are dead. Since we have discussed the dining philosopher problem in quite a lot of detail, let's look at a solution. This solution was proposed a long time ago. It's known as the conductor solution. The philosophers are exactly the same. They make their request as before. The only difference is that I, a conductor, is present there to oversee this. Any philosopher, if he wants the right fork, raises his right hand. I then have to grant him permission to pick up that fork. If he raises his left hand, he's requesting the left fork, and I have to grant him permission to pick up that fork. No philosopher can pick up a fork without my permission. Let's see how this works out. Philosopher 1 requests the right fork. I grant it to him. Philosopher 1 requests the left fork. I grant that to him as well and he starts eating. Meanwhile, philosopher 3 requests his right fork. Grant it. Requests his left fork. I give it to him. Philosopher 5 at this point is requesting his right fork. I choose to withhold. Wait until one of them is done eating and then grant it to him. Philosopher 1 seems to be done. So I grant 5 his left fork. As we can see, things are proceeding quite peacefully and all our 5 philosophers are still alive. We noticed that all the 5 philosophers were still alive when we left them. But does this really solve the problem of deadlock? As we remember, when the five philosophers got into a state where neither of them could eat, when all of them requested the right fork. Does this solve this problem? Let's see. All five philosophers have requested their right fork. I got it to one. I got it to five. I got it to two. And I also got it to three. But I withhold the fork from the fourth one. As you can see, this has given a deadlock, and now philosopher 3 can begin eating. When he is done eating, philosopher 2 can eat. When philosopher 2 is done, philosopher 1 can eat. When philosopher 1 is done, Five himself is able to eat. And when philosopher five is done, I grant both fourths to philosopher four. We leave all our dining philosophers well, alive, and well fed.
Now the philosophers are done eating and thinking. They seem to be relaxed and the mood to party. Philosopher 2. Hey. Open Gangnam Style. Oh.